Hey guys, good morning. This is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching. It's Sunday morning at 6.26 a.m. And uh, we're going to start, um, we're going to do a little bit of a trade review from Friday, but we're going to start a little bit differently so we can see how the uh, trade would have uh, worked or what would have set up. So one of the things I try not to do is go back and say, hey, this is what exactly what you should have done or you should have known it was trend day down. No one knew going into the Fed, right? So let's start with, so number one, when you look at the events calendar, we had three Fed speakers starting at 8 o'clock, the largest of which was 9 a.m. Central Time, being the Fed chair. And by the way, before we uh, roll too far into this, if there's anyone who would like to try the room out, here's how you do that. This is the uh, trade and perform at gmail.com. Well, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you. There we go. Trade and perform at gmail.com. You can ask for a five-day pass. This is only for traders that want to learn how to trade consistently and successfully this is not about capturing every move in the market right so uh, let's be clear about that so one of the things we're going to do today is line up levels right and everyone's going to go well, what's going on with these levels so i'm going to explain these as we go through the most important levels on this chart are the yellow zones okay, the yellow and sometimes there's white zones those are the most important plus where you don't want to trade which is right through here which is this is always these blue dotted lines to mark the prior days, what's called the point of control, right? So what I'm trying to do is help traders go from boom bust or inconsistency to large consistency, right? So um, here we go. Let's see if we can't get this uh, set up. So coming into Friday in the morning, number one, you'll see pre-market we traded into this yellow zone, right? So in the room, we focus on the trading during market hours. So you can see coming into the open, right here on a five, so I'm giving a five minute chart because that's what most people look at, right? And then I'm gonna convert it over into the algo, right? So first of all, this is what's called an area of single prints. And normally you would expect a response in single prints from the top of the zone and the back of the zone, right? So remember on this morning, we had uh, the Fed chair speaking, that's always a red flag condition, right? So if you'll go look at that same area, again, this is 820 to 845 prior to the Fed chair speaking, and we go and focus on that on the ES chart. What I want to do is convert and this again, the members in the room see this. And so they, they know it's all straight. I want to convert the I want to convert the high odds trades right into location. So if I look at location, right, I can see on the five minutes, see how they try to bounce it out the first time in right there. And then if you look a little bit closer on the chart, they try to bounce it from the back. Of the single print so guys when i say in the room the front and the back this is what i mean so this was the original bounce right this is the original bounce so let me explain something else this is what we call the tmp trading radar these four lines and generally what we want for the best trades nes is to get part of the bar because it's very hard to extend beyond this we want part of the bar where the signal occurs to occur outside of the fourth channel it's very hard to get the whole bar out of the fourth channel. So this is the front part. And one of the things I'm going to highlight here in ES is um, one of the team members in the room, uh, and his name is Teja. And Teja has run a very specific strategy. Um, and I'm going to show you what he wrote here in the room. Let me uh, see if I can find it. And using this strategy here, I don't pay Tasia. He pays me. He's part, he's a member in the room. And he goes, uh, using the strategy that I'm about to show you, right? He's going to say, let's see where I have it highlighted. It was early in the morning. Let's see if I can find it in here. Here we are. He goes, Simon, just to add to your point, this last month, trading 50% of the available trading days, I had, as of now, a gain of 32%. The high odds setup plus scalp really works, right? Uh, and that's from Tasia, member in the room. 32%, right? Past month. Pretty impressive, I would say. So if you look at his strategy and the way he would have executed it, see how this set up completely on the outside? So this is aligning with the first push into the single prints, right? So I'm going to erase the lines and see if you follow along. I know this isn't like, ooh, look. Very super simple. The super simple answer is he got completely outside on the fourth level and he took the purple bar followed by the star within three. And if you look at his trade, his entry, so Tasia always comes out of his trades for two points, 
and this trade was worth from 4198.75 to 4202. A couple things about this. A, this trade took place right at 8:30. I don't suggest trading at that time and it was still profitable, right? So if you look a little bit further as we're about to head into the Fed speaker, you can see over here we come on the 5 minute chart to the back of the single prints. See that right there? And from that his entry would have been here's another 3 bar combo, purple bar. And then see the bar with the little green dot? That's another algo. Again, it's on the outside of that rain. Entry 4192.75. Now, Tejo would have exited at 94.75. That's his two points, and he's totally happy with it. But this trade was with 4192.75 all the way up to 4200 and a quarter, right? So seven and three quarter points or about $350 a contract, right? So why am I showing you the five-minute chart over here if we can just kind of trade through this and um, just use the algos? Well, what you're trying to do, right? First of all, there's a transition period whenever someone's new, right? How do I go from a five-minute chart and levels to using the algo? What you'll see consistency consistently on the algo, and let's count it up here really quick. Let's do this. I'm going to go, I'm going to go and do it the hard way. I'm going to do all longs, right? So follow me. I'm going to do all longs right? And I'm going to do them when they line up on that fourth rail on ES. Why am I doing it the hard way? Because it was trend day down. So watch, erase this. So I just showed you how to use location, right? And we know we don't want to trade in this 4175 to 4169, right? It's prior days point of control. I'm trying to keep people out of losing money in difficult places. This is a difficult place. Don't trade here, right? But I'm going to erase this now and just go raw without any information, right? We're just going to look at this, we'll remove chart 10, and magically everything will disappear. Now let me show you on the high odds trades all the way through. We'll go all the way through with, with um, we're looking for, so what are we looking for? First we're looking for an algo that's preceded by a purple bar within two bars. So this is an algo, it's outside, no purple bar within two bars, no trade. Right, we're coming down, we're coming down, we get a purple bar. This is an algo, again, no purple bar within two bars. Purple bar, algo. This trade right here, right, that's at 9.04 a.m., purple bar star, 41.62. That gave you a direct line up to 42.05. That's 40 points, folks. That's uh, $2,000 a contract, is that right? Let's see. Every 10 points is uh, $500, 40 points. Uh, yeah, that's correct, $2,000. Just in this little move right here, Algo gave you the entry in real time. And whether you buy stop into the trade or you put a limit to get backfilled on your back test, you can see there was two bars that formed the backside tested you and pushed. What did that look like on the five-minute chart? That looked like... Now watch, see that little yellow zone right there? We come right into the yellow zone and skyrocket where? All the way through the point of control. P purple lines are value area low, value area high. Into the single prints, all the way up to prior days high. What happens at prior days high? Notice that no signal fires all the way through here. If you're wondering how Tejo makes his money so consistently, right? Purple bar, two algos on it, star and a diamond, roll to the downside. This trade, whether you took your two points or not, was 4,200 down to 4,185 and eventually worth over 100 points because we rolled all the way down. I believe we closed at um, 4056. So your entry here was 4,200. It was 150 S&P points from this entry if you, can, if you choose to push. Again, what do I teach people? This is really important, right? The way you get rich in day trading, it's not an instant thing, but you get a pattern and you repeat the pattern over and over and over, right? So if you look again, we come down, we're on the fourth rail, purple bar, star right there. Where does the market move to? There's your entry at 4190. Notice it touched the fourth rail, right? I count the rails from top to bottom. One, two, three, four. Star. This time it gives you a rotation. If you were looking long, right now, look. I know people, you're going to see people, they're like, well, it was trend day down. Does that look like trend day down to you right there? That looks like impulse move up. You don't know, right? Follow the signals. Let it make you money. 
41.90. Did Tasia get his two points? 41.95. He sure did, right? And he got paid. Go down. We're going to look for the next purple bar. Algo. So here's where Tasia got stopped, right? If he took this trade, this is the breakdown. Remember, this is highly volatile, right? Purple bar, diamond. That's the second best setup. It's best when it comes in a two bar combo. This was a stop, right? That would be his first stop. He's coming down. No trade here. Purple bar. POC over POC right there. See that? What was that worth? Let's go through and look. 4140. The best he could have done is 4145. Did he get his money out? He sure did. Remember, he's trading Contra in a highly volatile market. That's great. Right? He was actually able to pull his risk off that trade. And if he wanted to push it for more, he could. Where does his next trade setup come? Right here at 938. That's 4131 to 4140. 9.75 points, right? Off the two bar combo. It's the first hour. He's already done. What does he care whether the market goes down? Look. Day trading, people get this confused. Day trading is not about capturing the whole day. It's not capturing the, oh, it's trend day down, right? Oh, let me make 100 points. It's about coming in every day, taking out your money, right, and building your account over time, building your size over time. That's how you get rich. Day trading futures, right? I want to say that again. That's how you get rich. Day trading futures is repeating the process. Let's keep going. You know it's got to get difficult somewhere in here, right? So, again, what are we looking for? A two-bar combo with an algo. This gets him stopped at 10.04 a.m. I don't think it makes us two points. Let's look. Right? Remember, this is hard trend day down. Imagine when it's not hard trend day down. 41.21 to 41.23. Guess what? Teja got his two points right there. He got most. If he chose to let that trade go, he got the majority. He got a... No, nah, I'm not going to say the majority got a good chunk of risk off on that. He takes his two points and he moves on. Why? His win rate's huge, right? Keeps going. He's looking for a two-bar combo. Remember, both sides have to have the algo on it. This is New York lunch, 11 o'clock. We don't trade that. Why? Stops happen a lot during New York lunch. I do not suggest trading New York lunch. Wait till after. Now, at this point, I want to say something. We were very clear. We were very clear that the uh, market was headed for trend day down. This was the last stop, the only stop, actually, that Tasia would have taken here if he traded in the afternoon. And uh, just to remind you, Tasia pretty much only trades in the morning. Uh, everyone has to develop their own style. This trade got stopped no matter what you did, right? That was a proper setup, and that happens. It's not about 100% win rate. It's not about every trade being profitable. This is trend day down. It really got sloppy there at the end of the day. And, um, and I'll tell you, I did take this last shot at this trade, and it was the only stop of the day. A couple other things I want to go through before I wrap up this video. When you figured out that it was trend day down, and we figured it out quite early, right, there's um, two things to remember. First of all, we already knew it was trend day down, so any contra trade, we were coming in and out uh, pretty quickly. Uh, and then the other piece, we, we want to follow – so there's this fallacy that in your brain you can figure out every move and every way the market's going to trade, right? The trades we want, whether it's long or short. So I will tell you right now, I favor longs over shorts. You want to do shorts? I'm fine with it. I favor long over shorts, right? It's easier for me. The market, when it grinds up, tends to grind straight up, right? It's rare to get these down days. You get them down off the highs. But we tend to on trend days down. If you'll go back and look at May, very few days that close on the low. Massive counter rotations off the bottom. I'll cover that a little bit later. But guys, don't get used to this, oh, we're going straight down. These are one-day wonders, and they happen every once in a while. Less than 20% of the time, please go for the high odds trades, right? The short distance set up in a high odds fashion. Now, could have I take? Now, I want to show you something. Could have I taken the shorts from up here? Yeah, sure I could have. Right? It was pretty clear. The top of the channel was rejecting. The problem is if you stretch over a 10-day period of time and you keep shorting here, you're going to get stopped because the market likes to pop out of these channels before rolling back down. And you're going to take a lot of stops. So I suggest, again, you stick to the getting 
the bar, part of the bar outside of the fourth channel on ES. On NQ, I would suggest you get the bar completely outside the channel. So, as you can see, you could have traded long and profitably all day long on ES, particularly in the morning time, right? Prior to it rolling down. If you wanted the trend day down and you wanted it and you wanted to capture it, well, the algo gave it to you and the algo gave it to you perfectly right here. No one's going to do better than this. That's all there was to it. The algo prints in real time. It doesn't reprint and it keeps you in the trade. Here you go. All the way up on that whole run up. See that whole run up? The best algo you could have. Pink bar, star with a yellow diamond. It's one entry, no heat, 150 points. I'm going to leave you all with that. If that doesn't convince you, right, that the algo is amazing, that it gives you great opportunity to make a lot of money, I really don't know what it, what will. And you can keep struggling with five-minute bars and large stops and just in general people throughout these zones. Everyone can come up with zones because everyone can read mind over markets, right? Getting order flow into a color-coded basis where your brain can process it quickly, very few people do that. Um, so at any rate, that's my two cents. I hope everyone had a great Friday. I hope you did not get hurt. No one in the room got hurt. Uh, most people got paid. Uh, and even trading to the long side uh, on a down day like that was a profitable venture. And uh, I hope everyone had a great weekend. I'll cover NQ in the next video. Have a great day, guys. I'll see everyone on Monday.